Hi, this is Dr. Farley. I want to go over some um, two, two articles here that I think are really important for you to understand when you're trying to figure out um, how you may get help um, for these issues that you're having. So from the National Institutes of uh, Mental Health, there's a gr great paper um, and basically it says transforming the understanding and treatment of mental illnesses. And this is called the definitions of the R doc. There'll be a link to this and there'll be a link to the other paper I'm going to review also. And there's five areas of research that the National Institutes of Health says that we should be looking at. Um, there are over 200, the, by the way, these areas are based on uh, extensive research and were vetted by over 200 researchers in relevant fields. So presently there's five different domains um, and I'm going to run through them with you. There's negative valence, positive valence, cognitive, social, and arousal. So negative valence, basically the definition is how you respond to bad things, we'll call it that way. Positive valence is um, responding to things in a positive way. Cognitive systems, basically what are you paying attention to. Um, social processes um, is basically paying attention to various types of perception and inter interpretation of other people's actions, what's going on around you. And then lastly, which no one ever hears about in mental health is this thing called arousal regulatory systems. So what does this mean? This means that there's, um, I'm going to read this to you, the arousal regulatory systems are responsible for generating activation of the neural systems as appropriate for various contexts and providing appropriate homeostatic regulation of such systems as energy, balance, and sleep. Arousal is a continuum of sensitivity of the organism to stimuli, both external and internal. So basically the arousal uh, system that we're talking about here is the hypothalamus pituitary, sorry, the hypothalamus pituitary adrenal axis. This is what we call the stress response. It also has a major role in your sleep. That's why circadian rhythms are involved in that, your sleep and wakefulness. Um, and basically this is your stress response. It should be a short term um, fight or flight reaction and you're out of it. If the loop in a sense, the hypothalamus pituitary adrenal axis, is broken, just picture it's broken. Um, the, 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 the thermostat doesn't work properly anymore of that loop. Then gradually you'll have an over or an under exaggeration of what should be a normal stress response to the three types of stress. There is physical stress. Um, I don't exercise as a physical stress. I fell down the stairs. I had uh, an accident. I had surgery. Um, mental emotional stress, we all know what that is. When we, when we talk about stress, we usually only think about mental emotional stress. <clears throat> and yes, it's an important factor and you have to pay attention to what you're paying attention to. But the, I'm going to tell you the most important one that I see is chemical stress. And the chemical stress comes mainly from food that we eat that doesn't work for our bodies. And as we eat that food, we can create major immune disturbances that start in the gut because 85% of the immune system sits in the gut. And as you eat these foods, you whack out the immune system. Those chemicals called cytokines and other chemicals will travel up uh, the blood through the blood-brain barrier and they will tap on your hypothalamus and, t and fire off stress, 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 stress. So if you're eating something that you shouldn't be eating over a time frame, you can be exaggerating your stress response and burn yourself out over time. And it's a major player. Does anyone, has anyone ever told you that you should be looking at this to see if this is involved with possibly why you might have depression, anxiety, bipolar? It's a major player, a major player, and it's the fifth area of research from the National Institutes of Mental Health, but no one talks about it. Next thing I want to go over with you is another interesting paper that came out in February 2019. You'll also have a link to this. It's called When Do Alpha, when do alpha Synucleopathies Start? An Epidemiological Time Study. And the important thing to understand here is alpha synucleopathies are basically neurodegeneration. And these are uh, Parkinson's disease, Parkinson's disease with dementia, dementia with Lewy bodies, multiple systems atrophy. And basically what they're saying is these things begin years before we see some of the major symptoms that start to happen inside of people. And there's soft signs that your neurology is breaking down, but no one mentions this to you. And I'm just gonna read a few of them to you. So the first uh, thing that we can see that happens sometimes is my smell goes off. Smell can go off sometimes 30 to 40 years, um, and gradually people come in and say, yeah, I haven't had smell in a long time. And now they have one of these major neurodegenerative diseases. Second one, constipation and dysautonomia. 
any gastrointestinal sy symptom um, could be connected to neurodegeneration in the brain breaking down. <clears throat> and dysautonomia can also show up as um, what we just talked about, the arousal mechanism, the hypothalamus pituitary adrenal axis being off. That may show up as blood sugar regulation problems, blood pressure issues, sleep issues. All of that can be a sign of dysautonomia. It can also show up as erectile dys dysfunction in men. Next thing that we see here is anxiety and depression. Can you believe that? That a lot of people with anxiety and depression, these are some of the first signs that we're getting, the brain is breaking down into a neurodegenerative process that may not show up for another 10 to 20 years. So once again, we have to stop talking about anxiety and depression as only signs of a psychological cause and start looking at, hey, is this person showing other signs of neurodegeneration? And many times they are. Sleep is another big one. If your sleep is off, it can be another sign of early neurodegeneration. And lastly, anemia. Um, anemia um, may be a sign of the brain breaking down, but it may be also a major cause of the brain breaking down, and there's a correlation there. So I hope that you found these um, two articles uh, um, relevant. Again, it just goes to show you that there's a different approach to looking at these problems than only psychological, and that we're only talking about a lack of a neurotransmitter. Um, we can look at how things work, we can try to measure what's not working, and then we can fix what we find inside of you, and that's how we potentially can get you help if your case was to qualify. Thank you.